Hi everybody, my name is Sean. I wanted to do a quick video on something that I was building for a little project here because I'm a private pilot and been flying for a little while now and uh, every time I went up flying with one of my instructors I was always in awe because he stuck something to the window and he was able to see traffic and weather on his, uh, on his iPad. I was like, I want one of those. What he had was a, a Stratus, Stratus version 2. And uh, come to find out, the thing's like $900. I was like, well, I'm a pilot on a budget. I don't have the ability to cough up $900 for something like that. So I started looking around and watching videos on, on, the, on YouTube and stuff like that. And ran across a webpage. The webpage is uh, stratix.me. And lo and behold, there's a little shopping list on here. You can buy everything right off of Amazon. And you can put one of these things together for pennies on the dollar compared to a Stratus or a Stratus 2 or something like that. So I wanted to go over um, what I bought and I just went right off the Stratus webpage and went right down the list and bought everything I needed right on Amazon. So starting off with the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, you can see that right here in front of you. I ordered one of those, got that in. Uh, Pre-programmed SD card. This is what came as far as the SD card that goes in the Raspberry Pi. Um, antennas, so the, uh, the 1090ES and UAT, I guess this works on 978 megahertz, um, but antennas and the, the dongles that the antennas plug into that plug into the Raspberry Pi. And let's see, uh, Stratus case, that's what's in this box, we'll take a look at that later. And a pass-through uh, charging battery pack. The, uh, the pack that they listed on the website is not the one I chose. I chose this one here and there's a couple of reasons. We'll get into that later on why I chose this particular model as opposed to what was recommended on the webpage. And last but not least, number six on their list is a GPS antenna. So we're going to take all this stuff and unbox it and show you how to put it together. Alright, so we're going to do a quick unboxing here of all the pieces parts you'll need to put together a an ADS-B in receiver just like this one. Starting out with the Raspberry Pi 3. This is a Model B. Take a look at what's in the box here. Some instructions, static free bag, and the Raspberry Pi 3 motherboard. Next we have the SD card with the Stratic software already on it. Next we have the antennas we're going to need. This is the 1090ES and the UAT antenna on 978 megahertz with the required dongles that plug into the uh, Raspberry Pi motherboard. Alright, next we have the Stratus case with fan clear acrylic. Looks like the fan is inside there. We'll open that up as we're building it. Next we have a pass-through charging battery pack with cable. This is the one I opted to get as opposed to the recommended one that was on the on the Stratix website. Uh, there's a couple different reasons I got this. I wanted a higher capacity uh, to be able to do more things with, obviously. So what this will give me is the ability to not only power the, the Stratix, uh, when I do build it, it'll also give me the ability to have me power my iPad and possibly a GoPro. So that's why I wanted, wanted to have three different USB ins. This battery pack is 22,400 milliamp. Should be more than enough power to power all three of those things for a five hour flight. And last but not least is a GPS unit. If your iPad doesn't have GPS built in, you're absolutely going to need one of these. My iPad does have GPS built in, but I wanted a better GPS. This is a WAS enabled GPS unit, so I could expect resolution down to about 3 meters. And for the uh, cost of 20 bucks, it's, uh, it's a really good option. Alright, so I wanted you guys to see the list of stuff I got here. So the Raspberry Pi goes for $40.99. SD card with the Stratix uh, flashed onto it, $14.99. The antennas, $39.99. The case with the fan, $20.49. GPS, 
uh, plug-in unit for $18.99. And the recommended battery pack on the on the Stratex.me webpage was this Easy ACC 6,000 milliamp hour battery pack for for 20 bucks. I opted to go for a little higher capacity. The EC technology one I just showed you, 22,400 milliamps for $32.99. So the grand total for the uh, recommended setup with the GPS and the battery is $155.44 right off the Stratix.me webpage. My total cost was $168.44. So this should be everything we need to put this uh, ADSB in receiver together. Alcohol and Q-tip so we can uh, stick the heat sinks onto the Raspberry Pi motherboard. Need a couple of nut drivers, a uh, quarter inch and 5.5 millimeter. And we need a number one Phillips screwdriver, we need a 5 16 wrench and a socket, and a uh, set of tweezers because that stuff is small and Loctite, last but not least. Go. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take our Q-tip with rubbing alcohol on here, clean off these chips so the 3M tape on the back of the heat sinks actually sticks. Then we're going to take these heat sinks, which have the 3M tape on the back. We're going to use our handy dandy tweezers and stick them on each one of these chips. Okay, now the chips are clean. We're going to stick on the heat sinks. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is mount the Raspberry Pi inside the case. This is the hardware that came with it. So you have four, four screws, these spacers that go underneath the, the uh, Raspberry Pi motherboard, and four nuts. However, in looking at this, I think I'm going to modify it just a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to use the screws and the spacers that they sent, but I'm instead of using these uh, these nuts. I'm actually going to use these plastic uh, nylon uh, standoffs and that way when I run the screws up through the case and then put the spacer on then set the motherboard on these will be setting on top of the board much like this so just in case something comes off and I have something you know, one of these things flying around here using a nylon version won't risk shorting out any of the, the components on the board. So in order to get the Raspberry Pi motherboard mounted inside the case, um, I went ahead and started these screws with the with the spacers on the inside of the case here. But before we can put this in, we're going to have to plug everything in to this end that we're uh, that we need to. So a couple of things that we uh, learned here. The antenna dongles need to go into the bottom USB ports. Like that. And then the GPS USB needs to go through the case, through the hole, and then connected to this USB port. That is because of the placement of the cut out in the case. So now we just have to try to jam all this in, in there without hurting anything. go and you can see the numbers down here this one says 978 on this dongle here you got to make sure you connect the correct antenna to the correct dongle so that antenna routes over here and that is the one on this side and the other one underneath this USB 
uh, connector is the other side that is the 1090 cable so make sure you put the antennas on the right on the right side there all right next up is the fan and we'll get that going here in just a second okay the next thing we're going to do is install the case fan just for demonstration purposes this is how the case is going to be or the fan is going to be oriented in the case on the inside of the case and the power cable is actually going to draw power from the pins over there so orienting it like this gives you the most slack with the cables when you when you have to plug this thing in and uh, work with the the fan attached to the top of the lid uh, give you the most amount of slack so you can plug it in over there on the pins we'll go through that in a second here now the hardware that was in, uh, included for these uh, for for the fan includes three different screws and three different nuts you'll notice that uh, it only holds three um, but what I'm gonna do is same thing as I, I did with the motherboard in there instead of using the supplied nuts I'm gonna be using the uh, plastic nuts that is that is because if anything comes loose inside the case if one of these happens to fall off this is not going to short out the motherboard somewhere it's just going to be rattling around in there and uh, I won't have a dead Raspberry Pi motherboard for any particular reason as opposed to if I put those in there one of those falls off it could be the end of the end of the motherboard all right so let's go ahead and get this installed open this case up and again we're going to mount it like this That's all there is to mounting it. Three screws through there. The wire coming out over here because the wire has to plug in over here. And the three plastic nuts as opposed to regular nuts to get dropped inside there. And just in case it, it comes loose. Alright, so now all we have to do is connect the power cable for the fan to the motherboard. And what we're going to do is just kind of point to which ones we need to connect to. All right, the red wire from the fan needs to connect to the second pin closest to the wall over here, and the black wire connects to the third pin. So the first pin is going to be blank, second pin is going to be the red wire, third pin is going to be the black wire. like that and we are essentially done wiring up this Raspberry Pi all right so we got everything installed I didn't uh, snap down this lid yet just in case something goes strange I didn't want to ha happen to break this case if I had to pry it open again for some reason um, so basically we just need to get everything hooked up here and give it a give it a test so first thing we're going to do is is install the pre-flashed Stratix memory card. There's a slot down here on the bottom to install this. That installs just like that. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have the spring-loaded push-pull um, uh, sleeve for the SD card that you might be used to on other devices. It just slides in. If you need to get it out, you pull it straight out. Next thing we need to do is install the antennas. So again, we're going to pay attention to the dongle 978 is right there. Here's my 978 antenna. So I basically just follow the line and this is where this antenna would go. that and this one is the 1090 antenna and that doesn't want to spin hang on okay that's just 
it's really stiff. cards installed, antennas are on, we don't want to burn anything up without the antennas on it when we power it up for the first time. So now we just need to find the uh, micro USB and that is over here and it looks like uh, upside down so we should expect to see some flashing lights when we plug this in. Okay, the fan's running and we do have some flashing right, lights right there. The red light I assume is a power and the green is uh, accessing the memory card. So everything seems to be working fine with this. Now we just need to grab our tablet and see what we get. Alright, so we're going to walk through how we need to use this now. So I'm going to go ahead and power it up again. So we're going to power up via the battery pack, plug it in here, the fan should start and we should see some flashing red and green lights. All right. Fan's running, red lights on, green lights starting to flash. Okay, it's booting up. Now what we're going to have to do is uh, go into our Wi-Fi settings on, on our iPad and when it finally finds the Stratix, Wi-Fi signal. We'll go ahead and select it. Okay, so there's the Stratix. We click on it and we notice we get a blue check mark. It says no internet connection and that's fine. Um, all we need is a check mark here. We're not going to get a status up here that says connected to Wi-Fi. Um, so this is exactly what we need. Now, what we have is the ability to go into our uh, whatever whatever flight computer we wanna we wanna use. Most people are using uh, um, flight uh, for flight. Um, however, I'm a pilot on a budget, so um, I don't use for flight. I use Flight Plan Go. So when we, when we go into Flight Plan Go, we need to make sure it's uh, connected to this uh, Stratix. So we will go to external. And under ADS-B, we see the Stratix ability here, and it says connected to ADS-B, and we see that we have uh, some signals going on here. If we go back to the maps, we should start seeing some traffic in the local area, uh, such as those two targets right there. So we have a Southwest Airlines flight there at uh, uh, 1,050 feet. And we have uh, another another flight over here at 28,000 feet. So it's it's showing us our uh, our traffic in the local area, as well as our weather should be loading here pretty soon. So we can start seeing some weather on the east side of Phoenix over here. All right. So it seems like it's working just fine. Um, hopefully it works with your with your app as well. Now to get out of this uh, to get out of this and, and shut this thing down properly you have to do you have to do this. So if you go to an internet browser you're gonna have to type in the, the IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi motherboard and if we if we don't know what that is we can go back to back to the settings here and if we click on the Stratix, it's going to show us what the what it says here for under router 192.168.10.1, and that's that's what we need to type in here. So 192.168.10.1 go. And it takes us to our. Uh, uh, the website that's showing what's going on with the Raspberry Pi motherboard. Uh, there's some random information you can see on there, but how we need to shut this thing down properly, we hit the menu button over here. Menu drops up, uh, drops down this way, and what we need is settings. 
So we go to settings over here, there's a button to shut down the unit right here. So we click shut down and are you really sure? Yes, we want to shut down. So now while, while, while it's shutting down, we'll see a few more flashes of the green light and it'll go solid and then it goes off. Once the green light's off, you let it sit for a minute or so here and just make sure it's not uh, not accessing the uh, the memory card because if you happen to unplug this thing while it's accessing the memory card, you could corrupt the data that's on the card. So now we have just a solid red light, meaning the board's powered on and uh, the green light is off and it has been off. So now we're safe to unplug. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed our build video on this ADSB, um, budget minded ADSB. As you can see, it works just fine. Lots of targets on the uh, showing up on the iPad as, as well as weather. So, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, just like any video you see on YouTube. And thanks for watching.